Louise was born in 2013 and everything was pretty normal at that point. She had a little bit of jaundice and we stayed in the hospital a couple of extra days. Once you know we got her home, things seemed okay. She was about six weeks old. Things really went downhill. We brought her over to the hospital here in Ellensburg and were quickly airlifted out of here to Seattle Children's. She went through pretty much, it seemed like, every medical test known to man. Finally, after six weeks, they sent us home from the hospital and said, we don't really have a good diagnosis. We're gonna have you come back. We'll talk to some geneticists. Things at that point were okay. She wasn't quite meeting the developmental milestones, but she was eating by mouth at one point and um, we were able to get rid of the G2. She was getting some communication skills. She was you know, learning sign language. She had about 30 signs she could communicate with us and about five spoken words at that point and was really active and engaged. And then right before she turned three, we had, she had another big setback. It was significant seizure that led to brain damage. It was even scarier, I think, at that point with kind of their normal protocols just weren't working real well. And they'd send us back to the floor and we'd end up back in the ICU and as they were trying to get these um, seizures under control. That's where we met Dr. Senado, who took down a case history. You know, they were doing some more medical tests. We were waiting for all that to come back. Several more months after we let, left the hospital when we got the diagnosis that it was a mitochondrial disorder. So through the genetic testing that they've done, they have not been able to find a gene that specifically connected to mito. They know because of a muscle biopsy that there's a mitochondrial disorder and her, her mitochondria are not functioning the way they should be, but they don't have the exact cause. Maybe someday they'll be able to pinpoint that gene and find other kids with that specific gene and be able to connect it, but at this point they don't and that's why research is so important. So since that setback right before she turned three, she's not been able to eat by mouth anymore and has um, a G-tube for her sustenance. She also lost a lot of um, motor control skills she used to have. She can't sit up by herself anymore and um, you know, it's, it's a slow process to kind of get some of those skills back. She sleeps uh, uh, 12 to 14 hours a night, plus a three to four hour nap during the day. So, she, and she needs and wants all that sleep. Before we found out about the Guild, it was, we were very much out there by ourselves because we had no diagnosis um, and, you know, there was nothing we could, you know, no one we could really talk to. So that's been really, really nice is to have kind of more support in terms of other families who've gone through this. She goes to the Ellensburg School District Developmental Preschool, so it's for kids with some special needs. She goes for about two hours every morning. She takes the school bus and she loves getting her wheelchair up on the school bus and um, going up on the ramp. I will say school has been a great thing for Louise because it allows her to engage with her peers. She has someone that is always in her face constantly and presenting uh, opportunities for her to figure out what's going on in her world. And just in the past year you can see how you know she's tracking things with her eyes better and kind of following books or a little bit more closely and I think we're happy for any progress mm -hmm. you know just like any little things and we don't always see it because we're with her every day but you know people occasionally will be like oh yeah she's doing this and wasn't doing that six months ago so like any little progress is a really good thing. I don't think about it so much as uh, Louise has got these challenges and we have to figure out how to overcome them. I think we just have, Louise has these challenges and we have to figure out how to best support her. And Louise is a perfectly happy little girl. No matter what challenges we have at the end of the day or at the end of the week, Louise is almost always just a perfectly happy little girl. So we can take her uh, mitochondrial disease, we can take her brain damage, we can take all these things and say, yeah, these are challenges that have to be overcome. But with her, just her attitude, when you, you see her and how happy she is, generally it's like, well, you know, how can, how can't you support a sweet little girl like this?